One of Judaism's most respected leaders, Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri, announced before his death in 2006 that the Messiah had appeared to him. He said he had written the Messiah's name and sealed it in an envelope that was to be opened one year after his death. The envelope was opened in 2007, and the note he left behind shocked and horrified the entire Orthodox Jewish world. Stay tuned, and you will find out why. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. Nathan Jones and I are delighted to have back in our studio a dear friend and colleague, Carl Gallops. Carl, always a pleasure. Thank you, Nathan. It is my honor. Dave, mm, good, good to have you, Carl. Thanks. Well, folks, we've invited Carl to come back to provide us with a follow up to a program we previously did with him about his latest book, this one called The Rabbi Who Found Messiah. And Carl, I'd like to get started on this really fast by just giving our viewers a very quick overview of the book, and then we're going to hit you with some hard Look questions. Look okay. forward to it. Well, folks, in 2004, one of Judaism's most renowned rabbis, Yitzhak Kaduri, announced that the Messiah had appeared to him and revealed his identity. The rabbi said he had written the Messiah's name on a piece of paper and placed it in a sealed envelope, and he said he had given directions that the envelope was to be opened and the Messiah's name read to his followers one year after his death. Rabbi Kaduri died in 2006, and sure enough, one year later in 2007, the envelope was opened and the name that was read shocked and horrified the Orthodox Jewish world. And they are still in a state of shock, but meanwhile they have scrambled to cover up what happened. Now our guest, Carl Gallops, was determined not to allow that cover up to succeed. He has exposed the story to all the world in this book, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah. Carl, tell us uh, about this envelope and why it was so shocking. Yeah, well it was shocking because Dave, Nathan, in the fall of 2005 is when he announced that he was going to put the name of the Messiah in a note and leave it for the world to be opened a year after his death, as you just said. And what was shocking, within a few weeks, eight or ten weeks of him making that declaration, Rabbi Kaduri died. So a year later, the note was in fact opened and it was put on his website, kaduri.net. It was reported on by Israel Today in several different languages and a front page magazine cover as well as their internet site. It was also reported on in News First Class. Uh, it's called now News One out of Jerusalem, Israel in Hebrew edition only. Screen captures were taken of the note that he wrote and was put on the website. Well, the note was left in kind of a, a coded format and there's a brilliant... Which is typical of Kabbalah's. Tip, typical of Kabbalah's and of Kaduri, yeah. but it was brilliant in why he did that, and, and we can get to that later. But, but it, so it was on his website, and it was before the eyes of the world, as I said, reported on by some major uh, n news reporting agencies in Israel. But when the note was finally decoded, uh, within a matter of weeks or just a few months, they were shocked, they were horrified, because the note, when it was decoded, the name of Messiah was in Hebrew, which is the only language he spoke, Yehoshua, which is the long form version of Yeshua, which of course we would pronounce in English, Jesus. So he declares the name of Messiah is Jesus, which matched perfectly with what he had been, I'm going to use the word kind of secretly teaching mm -hmm. in his own rabbinical training school, as is evidenced by ten of his students now who are Jesus loving born again Christians as a result well, of what he was teaching. We're going to get to that later yeah. about the impact on the Jewish uh, folks, but uh, uh, let me just say that since uh, the book came out when? Uh, the book came out in November of 2013. Uh, okay, and it's become a bestseller, and yes. you also a movie has been made of it, and it's just roaring along. And instead of some Christian leaders celebrating the fact that this man identified Yeshua as the Messiah, they've been nitpicking at you. Yeah. Nathan? Well, we've it was probably one of the most controversial subjects that this ministry has ever covered. We've gotten so much feedback from Christians, both positive right. and negative. Right. Negatively, they had some questions, and I hope I can ask you to clarify them. You can them ask anything, yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, one of them was is that Rabbi Kaduri is a Kabbalist, and mm -hmm. a Kabbalist being a mystical Judaism, mm -hmm. not really Jewish, you know, animism type uh, belief system. And they said, well, well, he's got a Kabbalist background. How could therefore could the Messiah, Jesus Christ, talk to him? I mean, obviously we must just 
throw everything he needs right. to say because he's a Kabbalist. Right. And, and they particularly pointed out they didn't believe that your book really hit and, and condemned Kabbalism or not. Why yeah. did you, yeah. and maybe you did, I read the book, I, I think you did, but maybe you can answer yeah. their question. Yeah, there. well thanks. Well first of all, I have gotten much more <clears throat> positive feedback from the Christian community. Christian community than negative, okay. but there is some negative feedback and some of it is exactly what you just said. The bottom line, I want people to understand, I wrote this story journalistically, objectively. I wanted the story out. Not as a Baptist pastor. Not as a Baptist pastor, not as, I wasn't trying to trash or slam anything. I just wanted the facts out there because when the media covers up a story where in Jesus' name mm -hmm. is spoken as the Messiah from the, the, the most venerated rabbi in Israel, I, I thought, you know, and you know, we watched this unfold over the years, somebody has got to put this out there. Mm -hmm. So, but the bottom line is, um, I did, there, there are several chapters dealing with his involvement in Kabbalah. In fact, there's one whole chapter dedicated to Kabbalah itself, explaining it from the most innocent form to the most evil form. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so I did a thorough expose of Kabbalah and uh, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't trash it, but I made it very clear that it's not the biblical, it's not the, the biblical godly way to approach scriptures and interpretation well, of scripture. Uh, I, one I'm, one I'm of your not purposes a was to get through to Jewish people. Exactly. You don't do that by starting off well, a book trashing Judaism or trashing Kabbalah or whatever and expect them to read the book. Exactly, because Kabbalah, a lot of Christians, especially Western Christians, don't understand that Orthodox rabbinical Judaism is steeped in Kabbalah. And so in order to reach the Jewish heart and the Jewish mind that Jesus Jesus is Messiah, Jesus is Lord. You, you, you can't start off, as you just said, by trashing the, the no. foundation not, of the faith. And that's not faith. what the book was about no. anyway. The book Absolutely. was about this man and what he did. Absolutely. Reporting the story as objectively and truthfully as absolutely possible, resourced and referenced heavily. Yes. Another objection that the people had was the man himself. Yeah. He's a rabbi, he's yeah. a Kabbalist, therefore Jesus should have nothing to do with right. this guy. They're speaking for Jesus now. Yes. They say Jesus shouldn't have anything to do with them. Right. Should Jesus bring the gospel to someone who doesn't believe in him already? Well, you know, it has been amazing to me that people would proffer that argument. It's, it's, it's laughable because, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to people yeah, who've raised course, the argument, but, but okay, they say, well, Jesus wouldn't reveal himself to a Kabbalist. Excuse me. Jesus revealed himself to a murderer on the Damascus Road on the way Orthodox to kill Jewish more murderer. Christians. A rabbi, Orthodox Jewish murderer, a Hebrew of Hebrews, uh, a Pharisee who was on his way to put more Christians in jail, hunting them down out of their homes and, and, and churches and, and in the synagogues to destroy them. Mm -hmm. And yet Jesus revealed Himself. I think of a man on the backside of the desert who was a murderer by the name of Moses, whom God revealed Himself to in a mighty way and used him to save the, the nation of Israel out of bondage and captivity. So why could God not in these last days, and I believe we're living in very prophetic times. Mm -hmm. I don't set dates, I'm not a date setter, but I think we're in the end times. Why could not, why would not God reach down one more time to the most venerated rabbi in modern Israel's history to one more time through his mouth and his voice, and by the way, the way this whole note unfolded and what's happening now, we're going to talk about later. It, it's amazing what's happening. Why could not and why would not God reach this guy, reveal to him the one voice that millions of people would listen to? 300,000 Jews were at his funeral. The President of Israel gave the eulogy. Why would God not use that guy to take this message that Jesus is Messiah? I've, I've had people write and say, well, how, how could you promote a book where the guy said that the Messiah is already in Israel? Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> The thing is, I've gotten that too, and that really disturbs me because when people ask me that question, I realize they, they, have, not read the book. they have not read my book. I know. Yeah. Because I deal with that. I, I deal with the good, the bad, the ugly, the ups, the downs, the ins, and the outs. I, I used to be a cop for 10 years. I, I, I hit this as an investigator. That everything that I could find about this man and what he said, anything he uttered, it's in this book, and I analyze it all. So I have a whole chapter dealing with the fact that he speaks of of the fact that Messiah is already in Israel and He's getting ready to reveal Himself to the world and that the Spirit is, of Messiah is, come up, is going to come upon Him and He doesn't even really know that He's Messiah. Now that is unbiblical and sounds very strange to the Western Christian mindset or a biblical Christian regardless of where they live. But my book explains this because when you understand the Jewish mindset, the Jewish expectation of two Messiahs. Yes, and, exactly. you, and you have to realize that Kaduri mm -hmm. was giving messages 
messianic utterances long before apparently he came to the realization or the revelation that Jesus is Messiah. But he wasn't speaking about Jesus when well, he said that there was a Messiah in the I, land. I don't think so because no. it fits perfectly with the Jewish expectation of what they call Messiah ben Joseph, one who would already be in the land, who would be a military, political ruler, leader, but then after he dies, then comes forth the real Messiah. Now, Kaduri said he was going to leave the name of the real Messiah yeah. in a note. So, so if people would read the book, they would get the answer. And I to have the Christians question. who write and say, "Well, it just couldn't be Jesus of Nazareth. I mean, he must have been he must have been revealing some false uh, Jesus." And I said, "Well." Tell the, tell the Jews that. I mean, they were horrified. They knew they what knew, he was talking the, about. They knew exactly. That's why they took the note down. That's why they destroyed it. That's why the Jewish media covered it up. That's why the rabbis in Israel today are desperately trying to cover up this story and this book they, they, because they know what he was teaching. Again, evidenced by his students and, and others. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy and our interview of Carl Gallops, the author of this book, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah. Now, Carl, I think the key to this understanding this whole Rabbi Who Found Messiah yeah. is the reaction of the Jewish people. Yeah. How have the Jews reacted? I mean, are they embracing it? Are they hating it? Are you getting hate mail because of it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, no, no, and yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes. Well, well, some, some, well, many of them, of course, are are uh, trying to shun it because you got to remember the Jewish media shut it down. They did not see Yitzhak Kaduri was the Billy Graham of Jews, if you will. He was the leading voice for Judaism, rabbinical Orthodox Judaism. And so when this note was opened and posted on his website for the whole world, see, which by the way was brilliant because he was 108. What if he had just taught it secretly and then got up by his mouth and said, Jesus is Messiah? Oh, it would have been shut down. There would have been no evidence. We'd have never heard of it again. But the note's up there. Mm -hmm. It's there. Now the whole world, now it's in a book, now it's in a movie. The whole world can see it. So the Orthodox Jews who thought that it, they had successfully shut it down, they're not happy about it. And I've gotten hate mail about it. Well, that. it would be like Billy Graham saying I, I, the Messiah is Mohammed. Mohammed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so Christians wouldn't be happy about that. No. But of course we know uh, because of the death, burial, crucifixion and prophecies that Jesus is Messiah. So this guy says this, he puts it in a note. He doesn't just say it, he puts it in a note. Now, in the meantime, the reason I said yes and no is because what has happened since the book and the movie has made it to Israel carts and carts and cases and cases of the books and movies have made it. They're being given away in the streets of Haifa and Tel Aviv and, and, and Israel wow. and the old city and at the Wailing Wall. What has happened there is miraculous and it's astounding. By the way, this movie is being shown in churches all over America. And so uh, American churches are beginning to get it. They get it. They're getting the You're understanding. You're talking about a movie of the book. The movie of the book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, but, but anyway, back to Israel. So first of all, I mentioned in the first segment that Ten of Kaduri students we now know, and I'm going to tell you how we know because we have an operative in Israel, born and raised there, who's, who's making this happen. But we know ten of Kaduri students are already on record on film and video testifying that they are born again Christians, believers in Jesus Christ as Lord because of Kaduri's teaching in his yeshiva, the, the Hebrew word for a seminary, a rabbinical training school, in his yeshiva prior to writing the note. Yeah. He was already teaching secretly, okay, and he had to because the persecution is tremendous. And again, he's the Billy Graham mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's teaching secretly. So 10 of these students, we know that they, they, are, they, they are born again believers. But in the meantime, and by the way, my movie has been shown to them. They're, they're overjoyed because now they, they feel vindicated. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, but, but since the note was put up and now it's been revealed, here's what's happened. There's a gentleman by the name of Zev Parat, Z-E-V-P-O-R-A-T, two words, Zev Parat. Zev was born and raised in Israel. His father was a rabbi. Both of his grandfathers were rabbis. His, one of his grandfathers was a Holocaust survivor. Both of his great grandfathers were rabbis. One of them knew Kaduri personally. Hmm. So, guess what Zev was probably getting ready to be? <laughs> a rabbi. A rabbi. Yeah. But Zev, Zev's testimony is that years ago he was on Christian websites, similar to Lamb Lion, and he was, he was um, reading these Christian websites and their claims about Jesus and the Old Testament, etc. And he started comparing. And, and, and the man became, long and short, uh, a, a born again believer in Jesus Christ. 
The years have passed. He's solid in the Word, solid evangelical spirit and gift. His desire and heart has been to take the gospel to the Jews, to his Jewish brothers. He's been rejected by his family, rejected by his Orthodox community. But he and his wife, Lynn, now take the gospel into the streets. While they were praying, Zev has now told me this, they were in Israel. They knew the Kaduri story. They knew this had happened. They knew that Kaduri meant Jesus Christ because of his students. Zev has contact with these guys. He's got inside to the Kaduri organization. But he couldn't get Jews in the streets to understand it because the media had shut it down and the rabbis were not talking about it. And if you dared mention it, they would say, that's a lie. That's a lie. Hmm. But Zev knew it wasn't a lie. So he and his wife were praying that they would get some material somehow. They didn't know where. Literally, while they're praying, they get a knock at the door. A man from the United States had gotten these books and movies, brought them to him and says, God says that you need this stuff. Zev says, oh my gosh. So Zev didn't, you know, he didn't know me, even though Zev, I talk about him in my book and there's videos of him in, my, in the movie only because some of these videos are on the internet and we pulled them down and used them in the movie. Yeah, because, you go to his website, right? It's yes, you, uh, Messiah, Messiah of Israel, of Israel Ministries. Ministries. Yeah, the yeah. guy's amazing. So he gets the materials. And he, then he makes contact with me and he's calling me and writing me every day saying, Carl, you're not going to believe. And he calls it a Kaduri revival in Israel. <laughs> wow. Because now that, he says, now that I've got the materials, he said, I took the book on a train. He says, before the hour long trip was over, he said, literally, Carl, without exaggeration, half the train was sitting at my feet because you see the picture. See, yeah, they, it's like a magnet. Draws. It's not like a magnet. They, they knew. It would be like if you had a brand new book of Billy Graham with his picture on the front. Yeah. Anywhere you go, people say, that's Billy Graham. Is that a new book? Same thing with this, except there's been no books written about this guy. So when they saw that, yeah. they, they were freaking out. And they gathered around him, and he opens the book and shows him his note. And they said, we've, we didn't know this. How come we don't know this? We've, huh. we've got an elderly, <laughs> an elderly Orthodox Jew on video. Once all of this is explained and Zev goes through the Old Testament and New Testament, he shows him the, 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 the rabbi's note that, that Kaduri said, Jesus is Messiah. This elderly Jew looks at Zev and he says, and this is on video. He looks at him and by the way, it's on the internet. And he says, if this is true, and obviously it is, he says, this means the media and the rabbis are keeping me from salvation. Mm. He wow. said that. And Zev says, my brother, only the Holy Spirit would reveal that to you. He says, you're absolutely right. But Zev uses this to take them right through Scripture, through, through uh, prophecies in the Old Testament. Absolutely. And a point you made to me when we were talking at breakfast this morning is very important, and that is the average Jew, even rabbis, do not know the Scriptures. They, they spend their lives studying the commentaries right. on the Scriptures. They read the Zohar, the Kabbalah books. They read the Talmud, the Mishnah, the commentaries on all of those. Uh, they listen to their modern day living rabbis right. and their interpretations of Scripture. And and even those interpretations are just snippets of because Scripture. Because when He shows them these Scriptures like Isaiah 53, they don't even know they're there. Psalm 22. Yeah. They, don't, they don't know Isaiah 53. They don't know Psalm 22. They don't know Zechariah 12. They don't know Job 19. They don't know these Scriptures that speak of the Redeemer, the Messiah, the piercing of the hands and the feet, the yeah. rising after three days. Psalm 16, the rising after three days. They don't know these Scriptures. And or if they do, they've heard of them with a rabbinical twist that takes them away from the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But once they see this note that this Billy Graham of the Jews declared, and then Zev takes them to the Old Testament and then eventually into the New Testament and shows them how it all fits together. We have had salvation after salvation after salvation of Orthodox Jews. The most astounding, well all of them are astounding, but one of the most visually astounding one was one at the Wailing Wall. I've seen this. My it is, gosh. Describe it. It's just unbelievable. Zev yeah. takes the book and he always takes a Tanakh, an Old Testament with him and a, and a New Testament, but keeps these all separate. But he takes, he takes the book to the Wailing Wall. Now Zev's an Orthodox Jew. These people down here know him. Of course he's a believer in Messiah, Jesus. So he goes to the Wailing Wall. And I don't know if this is illegal, <laughs> but I would imagine in, I would imagine a couple of hundred years ago it would have been a stoning offense. Oh, yes. uh, but, uh, but he goes to the Wailing Wall and he has this book when there's nothing, you know, that's very Jewish. So, so, but Jews come, is this book? Yes, yes. At the Wailing Wall he does the same thing. He opens it up and he says, let me show you what Kaduri said. What? What? This can't be true. We've never seen this. Why don't we know about this? And then he tells them the same thing. Media shut it down. The rabbis don't want you. And there are rabbis listening to this <laughs> at the Wailing Wall. The rabbis don't want you to know this. These guys don't want you to know this. Yeah. And, Zeph, and so the, the, one of the last ones, the picture we got, a, a, a man named Jonathan. He's standing at the Wailing Wall. He's listening to all this. He says, 
tell me about this. So he looks at the note and everything. Zev takes him to the Old Testament, takes him to Psalm 22, Zechariah 12, Isaiah 53, then gets into the New Testament and Jesus and how he fulfilled it, how all the New Testament documents written by Jews. There's a book called Hebrews to the Jews to show that Jesus is Messiah. Jesus is a Jew. The disciples are Jews. He goes through all of this. Then the next thing Jonathan says, how can, how can I be saved? How can I know Jesus? We wow. have a picture. Praise we have Lord. pictures of him witnessing, praying. We've got a picture of Jonathan with his arms up on the wailing wall, giving his life to Jesus Christ. So, you know, detractors of the book, listen, I'm an author. I know you're always going to take um, criticism. I, I don't care. I, I really don't. I don't mean that. Not when soldier way. being saved, No, brother. that's right. <laughs> listen, my whole life is about advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ. This story needed to be told. If people don't like it, and it's because they don't get it. And if people make judgments on it before they read it, shame on them. But the bottom line is, um, I'm not this guy's uh, uh, publicist. I'm not his apologist. I'm not his spokesperson. But there's a story that needed to be told. I have told it. It's made its way into Israel. And multitudes of Orthodox Jews are being saved through Zev Peratt's ministry and this book and this movie. I give God all the glory. Amen. That is prophetic. That's end time stuff. It could very well be that Jonathan is the first Jew in 2,000 years to have been saved at the Wailing Wall. <laughs> I mean, it could very well be. And I, I'm, I'm just thrilled to be a little part of this. And it's amazing, too, is that if people are saying that, well, the people who are coming to Jesus through this book are coming to a different Jesus. They only have to go to Zev Porat's website, watch the testimonies, and yes. see the people giving yes. their lives to Jesus. Give that website again. I want people to go there. Yeah, messiahofisraelministries.org. Okay. I've had him on my radio program several times. The man is a gem of a Christian. He knows the scriptures. He's contextual. He's solid as any of us are here. He preaches Jesus. His whole heart is to take Jesus to the Jews. Now, he'll witness to Gentiles too. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but he really, he's like, he's like a modern day Apostle Paul. He has a heart for the Gentiles, but the first thing he wants to do is go to his own brothers. Well, you know, the Jewish people love to read. Uh, they're, they're one of the, uh, in fact, they have one of the highest percentages of books in the world per person. Yeah. And uh, when you walk up and show them just the cover of this, right. they recognize immediately who yes. that is. They yes. know that there haven't been any books written about yes. him, and they want to read this. Yeah. And by the way, the movie now has been subtitled into Hebrew ah, and Spanish. Oh, okay. And I wanted it in Spanish because I've got a lot of contacts in South America. But Zeph told me, he says, Carl, this is perfect. He says, you didn't know this, but there are a lot of Spanish-speaking people in Israel. Really? And they're going to need this. They're going to want this. So God is just working powerfully through all this. And He's opening doors across the United States for you to show the film yes. in churches. Yes, churches all over America are watching this film, showing the film. I've been getting tons of positive feedback, even from some of the most fundamental conservative churches and pastors. Once they watch the movie, they get it. They understand it in its context. Again, most of the criticism I get are from people who have not watched the movie. Nine times out of ten when I get a letter about this that's critical, you can tell from the letter they didn't read it. They haven't read they it. They got about halfway through yeah. and stopped. Yeah. If they would read it all the way through, they would love the conclusion to which it comes and they well, would be Well, I love the way you conclude the book when you get down to, as an investigative reporter, I mean, you're, you're trained to investigate, you're trained to evaluate to, uh, evidence, and I have to get to my marked up one here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't find anything without my marked I up one. I might know it by heart if you'll refer to Unraveling the mystery. Yeah. And you just go right down one, two, yes. three, four, yes. five, and you got, finally get, why would Kaduri leave such a note? if it would only serve to discredit him. That's right. Why would Kaduri leave a note saying Jesus he is Messiah? He knows what the reaction is going to be. He mm -hmm. knew the reaction. Well, yeah. And so that's it. One of the other complaints that, I've, that I get is, well, why, why would? Why, why would he leave a note? Why didn't he just start immediately yeah. telling people Jesus? If he was really yeah. saved, he'd if be he running was, through the streets right. saying, Jesus is Lord. They never why heard of right. Nicodemus, did that's they? That's right. Never yeah, heard of not? Paul. <laughs> it took Paul 17 years before he went. I mean, read Galatians chapter 1 and 2. He's, you know, he says it was three years before I went to Jerusalem. Talked to him, and he said after that it was 14 years later before I went back to the church and said I need to start preaching to the Gentiles. Yeah. Why? Well, first of all, he was persecuted unmercifully by his own people. Kaduri is 100 Eight. All right, ask me why. When you, if you'd have asked me why he left that note when I first started writing the book, I'd have scratched my head and said, I don't really know. But after I wrote it and after I have watched what has unfolded, I, I know why. I think this is the Holy Spirit has given me. Now I know because if this is real, if God really revealed himself, if Jesus revealed himself, and I believe he did, then how brilliant. 
could Dury die just a few weeks after making this revelation? Well, I don't think Dury could have known that. But he said, I'm putting it in a note to be open one year. All right, so he created a, a, an interest. He created a, a, a desire for people, a fascination. Well, it was open. Now watch. It was put on his website. Why? Because the note didn't say, Jesus Christ is Lord. It did, if, if, it, if the note had said that, when they opened it, they'd have burned it, spit on it, threw it away. Nobody would have ever known. But what it said, it was, it was a, encrypted in kind of a Hebrew phrase that described messianic traits. But it was, became obvious after a few weeks that he had left a little decoding formula to take the first letter of each of the six Hebrew words in the note. And he says, there you'll find the name of Messiah. So it took him a few weeks. So in the meantime, screen captures, uh, uh, you know, major media reporting on it because they were so thrilled. Our rabbi has, has put a note, you know. And, but when they decoded it and it said Yeshua is Messiah, that's when they said, what? And they ripped it down through because they knew, they knew this wasn't a false Jesus. It wasn't a fake Messiah. This is Jesus, the Messiah of the New Testament, the anathema to the Jews. And so they took it down. How brilliant was it to put the note because once that note was up there, now it can't be covered up. Mm -hmm. Now the whole world knows about it. Now we wrote the book and we've done the movie. Now the whole world knows about it and all of Israel knows about it and it cannot be stopped. It cannot be covered up. Jews are coming to Jesus in the streets of Israel like never before since the time of Jesus Himself as far as the impact of it. And I just think it's prophetic and I think it was brilliant. I think the note idea was brilliant in waiting a year. I think it was brilliant. And, and that's just how God would do something brilliantly. Amen. Carl, thanks so much for being on our program. Always a joy and blessing to have you. Well, folks, that's our program for this week, and I hope it's been a blessing to you. Until next week, the Lord willing, this is Dave Reagan speaking for myself and Nathan Jones saying, look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. If you enjoyed today's program, you will love Carl Gallup's book, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah. The book tells the fascinating story of Yitzhak Kaduri, the world-renowned rabbi who shocked Orthodox Jews in 2005 by claiming that the Messiah had appeared to him. He said he had written the Messiah's name on a piece of paper and placed it in a sealed envelope that was to be opened one year after his death. The Orthodox Jewish world experienced even greater shock in 2007 when the envelope was opened and the name in the envelope was revealed to be Yeshua or Jesus. This book is a classic example of investigative journalism that'll keep you on the edge of your seat as the story unfolds. Folds. You can order this hardback book for a donation of $20 or more, plus the cost of shipping. We're also making available the outstanding video movie that has been made about the book. In addition to Carl Gallup's, it features Jonathan Kahn, the author of The Harbinger, who provides insights into the Jewish perspective concerning the profound nature of Rabbi Kaduri's amazing revelation. The video is available on a DVD for a donation of $15 or more, plus shipping. You can obtain both the book and the video for a gift of $30 or more, plus the cost of shipping. Just ask for offer number 595. To place your order, call the number you see on the screen between Monday and Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, or order online at lamblion.com. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus.